Welcome to Choice Classic Radio, where we bring to you the greatest old-time radio shows. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and thank you for donating at choiceclassicradio.com. This is Orson Welles. A hurricane, according to the dictionary, is the highest term in scales of wind force. If I quote from Webster, hurricane. Cyclones of diameter of from 50 to 100 miles, wherein the air moves with a velocity of from 80 to 130 miles an hour around a central calm space which, with the whole system, advances in a straight or curved track, especially prevalent in the tropical regions of the Pacific. The final definition describes a hurricane as a violent rush or commotion, bringing with it destruction or confusion. We'll try to leave out the confusion, and I promise you we're not doing the dictionary, but I think you ought to know, as authoritatively as possible, what you're in for. Tonight's story, which is about a hurricane, is called The Hurricane. And the aim is to show what a cyclone of a diameter from 50 to 100 miles can do to a South Sea Island paradise and to the lives of the people who are still alive after it blows over. You hear me from here, Captain Nagel? 600 miles, madame. Are we really in the South Seas now? Right in the heart of them. The South Sea Island. The last hiding place of beauty and adventure. That's what all the travel folders say. Captain, what's that wretched barren spot way off there to the right? That's one of them. One of the South Sea Islands. Nothing like that in the folders. There was a time when it was mentioned in all the folders. Oh, but it's just a silly-looking sand wave. Is it a name? It's the island of Monacura. Twenty years ago, that was the most beautiful of all the islands that raised their little green heads above these waters. The most beautiful and enchanting bit of paradise in all the world. I always... Throw it a kiss when I pass it for old time's sake. Excuse me, madame. What happened to it, Captain? It's a very simple story, madame. That island made the mistake of being born in the heart of the hurricane belt. It begins quite a while back. I ran a boat between here and Tahiti in those days, before I got old and sober. And one beautiful morning like this, I sailed up to the beautiful island that used to be with sugar and calico and a few other things for the islanders, besides a new governor from Europe to enforce the law. Later, I wished I'd thrown him overboard. He was just about as beneficial as the hurricane. But maybe I misjudge him. It's his story anyway, and I guess his story is as good as mine. The Journal of Eugene Delage, Administrator of Manakura, August 5th, 1902. From Tahiti to here, nine days on the Katapoa. Fair wind and a calm sea. And early this morning, we sighted Manakura. Look, Eugene, the island. Yes, there it is. I never believed there was such beauty in the world. It's paradise, Eugene. Our paradise. Well, let's hope the residence is a fit place to live in. I understand the last administrator is very incompetent. Suddenly, sort of fellow. I'm telling you what we're getting into. I'll never want it change, not any part of it. Very well, my dear. You admire and I'll remodel. Natives are probably lazy and dirty and immoral. I've understood from other governors that these South Sea people are utterly lawless. Oh, that depends, Your Excellency. Oh, hello, Captain. Good morning, Madame Thank your pardon, Captain. It depends, Your Excellency, largely on how you treat these people. Uh, take my mate, Tarangi, for instance. I'll match him against any sailor in the Pacific. How's the wind, Tarangi? Holding... Morning, Captain. It has to hold if I say so. <laughs> I'd as soon sail without canvas as I would without Tarangi. Captain, canoes coming. Coming aboard. What's that? Canoes. They're coming out to meet us. Chief Mahavia and his family. Lower the ladders, sir. Captain. Yes, they're a fine lot, these islanders, if you'll just leave them alone. Really, Captain, you can hardly expect me to sympathize with such an opinion. Besides, I've been led to believe quite differently. Mahavi! Come up and welcome! That's him coming up the ladder. The tall one with the white hair. And with him is his brother, Tavi, and his daughter, Marama. What a lovely girl. Welcome! Welcome, Mahavi! Great chief, in the name of all my people, I welcome you to our island of Manakura. Thank you. May we work together, our people and you, in friendship and understanding for the benefit of all. On behalf of the colonial government of my country, remembering always that duty comes before friendship and obedience before understanding, I accept your welcome, Chief uh, Mahavi. Great Chief, 
My wife is dead. My daughter will speak now for the women of our island. Like these white flowers, madame, may your life be happy among us. May beauty and love dwell with you always. What is your name, my child? My name is Marama. Thank you, Marama. I saw your island for the first time barely an hour ago from afar. But already I feel that you and your people are known to me and that there is love between us. Always I hope you will think of my husband and me not as strangers in your midst, but as friends. And uh, here, Your Excellency, is our priest, Father Paul. Yes? Father Paul, father. this is uh, Madame Delage. Yes, I heard what she said just now to Marama. That was a fine thing you did, Madame Delage. With one simple gracious speech, you have done much to erase all the pain and misunderstanding that has marred the relations between the people of this island and the alien law that governs them. That's very kind of you, Father. <laughs> it's against my principles, Madame Delage, to agree with Father Paul, but I'm afraid this time I've got to admit he's right. <laughs> Thank you, Captain. Uh, well, Father Paul, as soon as it's possible, I want you to show me everything of your work. As administrator of this island, I should be... <laughs> What are you laughing at? That amuse you, Captain? Uh, it does, Rama. I, I'm sorry, Monsieur Delage. Uh, you see, Madame, your husband may administrate all he wants to, but do you know who really runs the people of this island? Who? Why, Father Paul. Isn't that so, Father? You marry them, you bring their children into the world, you baptize them, you bring them up, and in the end, you bury them. boy is stolen a canoe. Stealing is against the law. There's a penalty for breaking the law. He's therefore sentenced to 30 days punishment. Finished with those 30 days, he'll know better than to break the law again. My great chief. Where's the sentence, Chief Mavis? That's a harsh sentence, Your Excellency. My concern, Father Paul. But after all, Your Excellency... No, you're pleading for this fellow, Father. I don't interfere with your work, which is religion. Please don't interfere with mine, which is justice. Chief Mavis, this man is sentenced to 30 days hard labor on the coral reef. See, the sentence is executed. March 17th. Over the length and breadth of the island this week, all thought of work is forgotten. Captain Nagel's mate to Rangi and uh, Mahavi's daughter, Marama, are to be married. A great feast has been spread in the clearing in front of the residences. There's laughter and music everywhere. Men and women both are decorated with great wreaths of white flowers, and there is dancing every night, March 19th. Incidents occur today which disturb me profoundly. My wife's sake, I've ignored it. I'm not sure, however, that I've acted wisely in doing so. Marama, Marama, wait! You must just follow me. You know that if we are caught... Yeah, I've Tarangi. caught you. Oh, Tarangi. It's against the law for the betrothed to be alone until their wedding day. But we've always been together, Marama. We always will be. It was meant to be so. It's written in the stars. If it is written in the stars, then it is so. And it is. You've no way of knowing. But I have. Deep inside me, I know. There is no law of God or man can keep us apart, my You must not say such things, said Angie. It frightens me. If it were wrong, then I should not say it. But it's right, and I believe it. And it shall be true. If the great water should separate us, I would swim to you, Marama. If walls are built around me, I shall climb them. And if chains hold me, I shall break But always, I will return to you, Marama. Believe that. Why did you say that, Tara? To what? About the great water. It is as if you had some portent. Oh, I'm only making love to you, and yet you read a portent in it. Marama. Tarangi. Oh, stop. This is the hour that you, Delage, comes for his walk along the beach. He might see us. Ah, what if he does? We'll be married tomorrow. He'd not be pleased. What does that matter? He's never pleased. All the same, I don't want him to see us. I'm afraid of him, Tarangi. He walks so stiff and straight and, and looks so stern as if he always expected to catch us in some wrong. Oh, I'm glad I'm not going to be his wife. <laughs> With a husband like that, Tarangi, a girl would never laugh and smile. But you're not marrying Monsieur Delage, Marama. You're marrying me. And with me, you can laugh and smile and make love. And after we're married, I stood still in the long grass by the edge of the beach and heard them. I heard every word they said about me until they moved away. After they had gone, I stood there quietly for a long time. 
looking out over the lagoon. Why do these people feel about me as they do? I've tried to be just and honest and fair. I've been as friendly with them as my position and my responsibility will permit. I've done my work here well. I've upheld the law to the letter. That's what I was sent here to do. And I've done it. What more could I do? committed to me, I now pronounce you, Marama, and you, Tarangi, united in the bonds of matrimony through the Saint Christ our Lord. Amen. Listen to that, Delage. That's music. Oh, come on out and watch them dancing. Forget that stiff-necked government of yours for a night. You'll permit me to remind you, Captain Nagel, as a representative of that stiff-necked you government. You I've seen quite enough of these marriage festivities, and I should say that you had too, Captain. Me? Me? Well, then, they just begun. Well, good night. Uh, didn't mean to offend you, Delage. Sorry you both want to join me. Good night, madame. Good night, Captain. I'm afraid that sometimes the captain is uh, overly fond of his cognac. I'm sure he didn't mean to offend you, Eugene. It was nice of you to join the wedding party even for that little while. It made them happy. It wasn't so hard, was it? I don't know that my government would have approved. There's no harm done, I guess. No, no harm done, Eugene. And a great deal of good. If you'd only try and understand these people, Eugene, they're not like us. Why don't you let me help you to see them? Not through the eyes of your bureaus and your official reports. How else should I see them? Through my eyes. As you did for a little while this afternoon, during that marriage. So you were pleased with me this afternoon. I felt nearer to you then, Eugene, than I've been for many months. Thank you, my dear. I think that's the one thing I couldn't bear. Whatever happens, that we should ever drift apart. Either in our minds or in our hearts. May 26th, Captain Nagel left today for Tahiti. All night they were loading. When they sailed, the Catapora carried the biggest shipment in the history of the island. Over 100 tons of copra. I think I may be permitted a not unreasonable pride in the reports I sent in with him. Colonial government. from the island of Tahiti. Well, you can go ashore if you like. We won't be unloaded till morning. We'll start for home at the time. Thank you, Captain Nagel. I want to get a present for Marama here in Tahiti to make her happy. Well, you go along then. I'll meet you at six at the bar. We'll come aboard together. Yes, Captain. Thank you, Captain. coming towards the bar? He's been here all afternoon. He's drunk, looking for trouble. But I'm not making any trouble. You know how white men are when they're drunk. Get away from that bar, Let me you! Let Tarangi. I don't drink with natives. Get away from that bar! Please, I tell you, Tarangi. I'm not doing anything wrong. Oh, you're not, eh? Well, get up. Get up when a white man tells you, do you hear me? That'll teach you to obey your superiors, you! <laughs> Your Honor, six months. Yes, in Nagel, you heard the verdict of the court. A native hit a white man and hit him too hard. Not hard enough, sir. The man was molesting him. The sentence is unjust, Your Honor, and you know it. The court first sentence, Captain Nagel. Six months. The sentence will stand. But I sail in the morning. Is there nothing you can do? There is nothing I can do. You mean there's nothing you will do? That's right. Good day, Captain Nagel. Captain Nagel, Captain Nagel. I've done all I can, Tarangi. Six months isn't long. The time will pass quickly. 
You will see Marama, Captain. You will tell her how it is with me. Yes, Tarangi. And you will see that she is taken care of, please. Of course we will, Tarangi. And Captain, tell her... Tell her not to be sad. And tell her not to worry. Tell her I'll come back to her soon. But, Eugene, it sounds so unjust. Politics and red tape, that's all it is. It's an offense to good government. Passion is a dangerous thing, Captain. I wouldn't criticize the government because a native breaks the law. But, Delage, even the jury was sick about it. I could see it. The magistrate, as I take it, is a just man, as I try to be. You'll see that no unfair punishment is inflicted. Unfair punishment? If I may remind you, Nago, I don't choose to listen to criticism of my fellow administrators. It's not easy to wield authority. The man who allows sentiment to warp his judgment fails in his duty. Something you perhaps can't understand. Perhaps not. Sometimes I think perhaps I've been too lenient here. I wouldn't worry about that, Delage. Thank you for that assurance, Captain. Eugene. Gentlemen, gentlemen, it isn't worth quarreling about. Six months isn't forever. Why, first thing you know, Captain, you'll be bringing Tarangi back in time to see me bring his child into the world. Child? Yes, Eugene. I didn't know. But that doesn't affect the case. Eugene. Germaine, there are things that concern me alone. I must ask you in the future to leave the administration of this island to me. Trust you won't make it necessary to speak to you again. Sorry. Now, gentlemen, if you'll excuse me, I've work to do. I wish to expect you at the residence in dinner. Assaulting a white man, you were condemned by the High Court of the island of Tahiti to six months imprisonment. You tried to escape. For that offense, your sentence was doubled. Four times you have attempted to escape. Four times you have been recaptured. And now, again, you appear before this court. And again, this court must sentence you according to the law. You know the law. You know the punishment. Double your previous sentence. Sixteen years. Yes, Delage. You had this information two months ago when you were here on your last voyage. Why wasn't I told? What information, You know very well what I mean. Eugene, what is it? Only what might have been expected, madame. Rangi escaped again two months ago. This time he got away. A guard was killed by accident. <laughs> accident. I happen to know the facts, Delage. And I have them here in this letter from the ward of the prison. Official facts. You thought I wouldn't find out, didn't you? You thought you could shield and murder. Oh, I'm sure that's not true, Eugene. She's right, Delage. That boy wouldn't commit a deliberate murder. But we all know how the captain feels about Tarangi's misfortune. Misfortune? Mm. He brought it all on himself, Father, by his stubborn defiance. Now, by escaping, he's made a laughing stock of the police. The law. Above all. Me. Oh, Eugene. He must be retaken. The government's prestige will suffer if he goes unpunished now. I think it suffers more when a boy can get 16 years for striking a man who molested him. I know very well what you think. What you all think. Cease to be of any interest to me. The authorities believe he will attempt to make his way to this island. They warn me to watch your ship, Captain Nagel. My ship was searched before I sailed. It was trapped to kill him. And anyway, don't you know that Tarangi wouldn't implicate me by stowing away? Where would he hide on a boat the size of the Catapora? Your crew would hide him. I only ask you to remember your duty, Captain, as I attempt to remember mine. Eugene, judged by God's law, Tarangi has done no harm. Isn't that true, Father? I may be a sentimental old man, madame, and a very bad priest, but I believe God would judge somewhat differently from the colonial government. Listening to Orson Welles in the Campbell Playhouse presentation of The Hurricane with Mary Astor. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. And now Orson Welles resumes our Campbell Playhouse presentation of The Hurricane with Mary Astor. General of Eugene Delage, Governor of the Island of Manakura, 1902 1909. August 5th, 
Today is the seventh anniversary of our arrival, Marakura. Little to celebrate. Still no news of Turangi. Over the island there hangs a strange gloom. Grows for the month. What's that confounded noise? I don't know, Eugene. It sounds very gay. It's months since they played like that. Why? Why? Yes, for months this island has been like the place of the dead. Now suddenly tonight this... There's no festival this time of the year. I'm going to find out. What are you going to do? I'm going to find out what it is. <laughs> Bailey! Bailey! Silence! What's going on here? What's happening? The people are celebrating your excellence. Celebrating? Celebrating what? Their happiness, excellence. What are they happy about? Well, Tarangi, you are excellent. What did you say, Bailey? He's coming home, Delage. Tarangi is coming home. How dare you? How dare you stand there and defy me and you, Mahavi? Where did you hear this? Who brought the news? I can tell you that, Delage. Where, well, Captain Nagel? The drums have brought the news. Six hundred miles from Tahiti, the birds have brought it. You hear the wind blowing? Well, it came on the wind. Nagel, you're drunk. Well, maybe I am, Your Excellency, but what have you got to say to all this? How about it? Has your colonial government any law against dancing and singing when the heart is happy? Eh, hey, have they? Well, Mahave, administrator of this island, I demand to know what information you're holding back. He's Tarangi here, you see him! You don't have to see him, Your Excellency. He's the soul and symbol of all these people. No cage can hold them. They're the last of the world's afflicted race of humans who believe in freedom. Look at them dance! Those the island dances to your law! Tarangi, no sign of him, yet I'm sure these people are right that he's near. Shall instruct Captain Nagel to take me to Katapoa for an extended search over the islands. Motu Tonga, Motu Atia, even the Far Islands. Must you make this yes, trip, Eugene? Think... Why? It's only my regular tour of the island. I shan't be gone a month. Why are you so concerned? It's only... I don't see how you can go on his ship after the way you talk to Captain Nagel. I don't hold grudges. You know that. Nagel ought to know it, too, after all these years. I know why you're going, Eugene. You hope to find Tarangi. Well... Don't go. You should know me well enough not to ask that. Once, one night in this room, six months after we came here, I asked you something. You asked me to see these people through your eyes, not the eyes of the law. What's happened? An accident. No accident, Germain. The logical outcome of my own weakness in listening to you. Eugene, you do I made a mistake once, Germain. I don't intend to make it again. No matter what the cost. What is it you want, Eugene? That boy's life? You, the priest, Captain Nagel. You all think I'm motivated by revenge. See if I could be that small. I know you're not. They know you're not. Believe me, Eugene, we all understand. That's why we pity you. That's why I beg you now to give up this passion of yours before it destroys us all. Give him his chance, Eugene. Him and Marama, they love each other as we once loved each other. Germaine, all the others are against me. Not you, Germaine. Search for Tarangi has begun. Catapo is well out of the lagoon now and in full sail. A while back we passed Father Paul, the native boy, Marco, making their weekly fishing trip in that little yawl. Strange, enviable man, Father Paul. <laughs> the simple life he leads. His work and his play are one. And in them he finds such peace. I envy him that peace. Shall I steer a while, Father Paul? You must be getting tired. Not yet, Marco. Soon it will be time for supper, then you may take the tiller. What are you staring at, Marco? Look, Father. Do you see nothing? Huh? What is it, a log? Canoe. And a man clinging to it. You sharper eyes than mine, lad. There. He's moving again. Are you sure? Yes, Father. 
Maybe it's... Maybe it's him, Father. Maybe it's Ferengi. How long were you in the water, Tarangi, hanging to the canoe? Two days. Ah, oh, good to be alive, Father. Yes, my son. After that experience, 600 miles alone. Doesn't seem possible. Well, you've done it. Now you're faced with another problem. What are you going to do? Now I'm going to see my wife and the child I've never seen. And my mother. And then what? Oh, you know everything, Father, that I killed a guard. I didn't mean to, but he was killed by me just the same. I can't ask you to help me. Yet you know what it will mean to me if you would. I know. Father, you're not going to tell. Give me one day, Father. That's all I ask. Give me one day with Marama before you tell anyone. I first saw you, Tarangi, an hour after you were born. I watched you grow to manhood. All the events of your life have been an open book to me. How can I be your judge? Then you're not going to tell, Father? No, I'm not going to tell. Tarangi, the administrator, is making a tour of the island searching for you. He's expected back soon. You must be gone with your wife and child before he returns. Oh, Father. Father, how can I ever thank you? You don't owe me any thanks, Tarangi. This is just between me and somebody else. What? Oh. Oh, Marama. I had forgotten I would wake and find you beside me. And if I just reached out my hand, I would find you. It's so good. Tarangi, you must get up. My father, Mahavi, is here. He's outside waiting for us. Mahavi. Greetings, Tarangi. Father. My son, I waited as long as I dared before I came to you. You must be gone before the administrator returns. But where to? To the forbidden island, to Fenua Ino. Fenua Ino? But that is taboo. That is why no one will look for you. Once there, you and Marama will be safe for the rest of your lives. Yes, father. Tonight, Marco and Marama will sail my canoe across. Yes, father. And after, you will go together tonight. To the Forbidden Island. To Fenua Eno. August 19th. Carapur Dock today. Our search was fruitless. And with the news I bear, there was no pleasure in coming home. A strange disquiet on the island. I feel it all about me. There's no movement among the natives. They only stand about and keep watching me. I have a curious feeling that something is going on here in this island behind my back. Jermaine met me at the dock. Even her greeting was strained. And at dinner, the residency tonight, Father Paul did not appear. I've never known him to miss one of these dinners of yours before. It's strange his not being here tonight. Why do you suppose he didn't come? Oh, he's in the village with Mama Rua, I expect. She's nearing the end now. She's going to die. Who? Tarangi's mother. She keeps Mm. hanging on, though. She has a feeling she's going to see her son once more before she dies. What makes her feel that, Captain? Just delirium, I suppose. I'm asking the Captain, my dear. Oh, your wife's right, Delage. It's uh, the fever, probably, and some sort of superstition. You know how these natives are. Yes, I know. You can never tell what's going on in their minds. In the seven years I've been here, I've learned to rely on instincts. Tell you there's something going on in this island. As I came up through the village, I don't know. Natives behaved queerly. Some of them smiled at me. Never do that. Kept watching me and smiling. Smiling behind my back. 
If Tarangi was on the island, none of you would tell me, would you? Would you? That, uh, <clears throat> that wind's been rising all evening. The worst I've heard in a long time. That devil's running around. Yes, looks like we're in for a real blow this time. Well, I'd better be getting down to my ship. I've never been on the island in a storm. Do they get very bad, Captain? Well, I've heard tales of them. The great wind, the natives call them. A wind that blows the islands out of the sea. But I think Mama Coro's pretty well anchored. Well, good night, Madame Delage. Good night, Captain. Good night, Delage. Good night, Captain. Jermaine. Jermaine. Did you hear anything? Just the wind, Eugene, that's all. I thought I heard voices. I'm, I'm right. There is something afoot. Outside there. Something queer going on behind my back. Tarangi up at sea, not ten miles from here, last night. You. Of all men. My own priest. I am Tarangi's priest, too. Could I, preaching the gospel of infinite love and the remission of sin by repentance, betray his trust in me? The laws of the state are one, the laws of God another. Where is he now? I don't know. I see. Well, good night, Father. Captain 
my porthole, I can see the great waves breaking white on the reefs. Something grim and terrible in the aspect of the sea. All my thoughts are through me. I've never left her like this before. It troubles me. What, Tarangi? The birds, the sky was black with them. They've all gone away from the island. What do you mean? Don't you understand? The great wind. The birds have gone because the great wind is coming. The great wind. The hurricane. That's why I came back to warn you and my people. Run, seek shelter. All of this will go, this house to the whole island. You must find shelter. Hurry! We'll get through somehow. Oh, Tarangi. May God bless and save you all. together, madame. Before long, they will find us. But who? Surely there's no one left. I saw Captain Nagel's schooner pass way off before we were washed on shore. Eugene. They will find us before long. Then they will take you again, Tarangi. Oh, no, Marama, no. Tarangi, it isn't part of your island, your refuge. You've got a canoe. Why don't you go? We cannot leave you, Madame de oh. Not until they come. You must leave at once in the canoe. Once you're out of sight, you're safe. Tarangi, I beg you, please go at once. We shall do as you say, Mother. Germaine. Germaine. You're safe. 
true, my dear, my dear. And you, Captain Nagel, you too. It was a miracle, madame. And the poor father isn't here to hear me say it. Germain. Yes? Were you the only one? Yes, Eugene. Were there no others? No others. They were all washed away. I'm all alone. I was tied to a tree. It drifted here. All the others were lost. All the others. Take me back to the boat. Germaine, you say you drifted in on a tree. It must have launched over the beach. Where is it? Uh, on the other side of the island. Take me back to the boat, you I have to report everything. I have to have a look at that tree. Jean, don't leave me. I'm afraid. Yes? Look. Footprints on the sand. Footprints? A man, a woman, and a child. Your footprints across the island. Down to the water. Eugene, please don't go. Don't no, leave me. I'm only going to stop the hill, my dear. It's a few yards. Please, please, come back. There's nothing One to moment. see. One moment. One moment, Jermaine. Was it Tarangi? Yes, and Marama and the child. You can see them from that hill. He can't help it. Eugene, please come back. I'm coming off shore. The water, something. Something dark. It's moving. It's a, it's a canoe. The... There are three figures in it. Oh, it's nothing. I, I saw it. Eugene, it's nothing. It's only a floating log. Eugene, now that you've seen... Eugene, you can tell now, can't you, that it's only a floating log? Yes, Jermaine. Let's go back to the ship. It's nothing... It's only a floating log. Peace has been restored in studio number one. I also want you to know that the height of the big wind, the wind that blows the islands out of the sea, no one was braver or calmer than our guest of the evening, whom we are so glad to welcome back to Campbell Playhouse, Miss Mary Astor. Thank you, Orson Welton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. However, there's good reason for her calm, ladies and gentlemen. This is not Miss Astor's first hurricane. No, indeed. The, uh, the part of Madame Delage, which she played with us tonight, is the part she created in the picture, Hurricane. And of that hurricane, the hurricane that director John Ford stirred up on Mr. Samuel Goldwyn's back lot some two years ago, stories are told that will never be forgotten. I, I wonder, Mary, you perhaps could bring yourself to tell us a few of the terrifying details. Well, that hurricane, Orson, lasted not three minutes, but three months. Ten hours a day of wind and driving rain and Miss flying Hester, sand. <laughs> please go on. Well, what would you like to hear? About the time I was submerged for 90 seconds in eight feet of water or the time I fell 30 feet out of a tree? A tree sounds great. Tell us about that. Well, if you remember just now in our story, Tarangi lashed me to the branch of a great tree. The tree was carried out to sea and I survived. Correct. Well, in the picture, that branch was about 30 feet off the ground. When the waves hit the tree, that branch broke suddenly and started, with me on it, head down towards the concrete floor, 30 feet below. What happened then? I just went sailing down. It was a fine sight. Most convincing, everybody said. Yes, but... The uh, cameras went on right on grinding. Director Jack Ford chewed up two handkerchiefs, and everybody was delighted. But what happened to you, Mary? Oh, me? Well, luckily, studio trees are partially made of wires, and those wires kept me from falling completely. <laughs> After a while, some of the crew came over and cut me free with pliers and things. But nobody worried very much because by that time, there were five or six people drowning in the tidal wave in front of the church. Uh, thank and... <laughs> you very much, Miss Mary Astor. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, after that, I think you will all agree with me that we are very, very lucky to have Miss Astor with us here tonight. And I assure you, I'm very, very glad to be here. Good night, Orson. Good night, Mary. And please, visit us very soon again. <laughs> In tonight's Campbell Playhouse production of Hurricane, Orson Welles played the part of Eugene Delage. Germaine Delage was played by Mary Astor. Father Paul was played by Ray Collins. Everett Sloan was Captain Nago. Edgar Barrier, Turangi, and B. Benaderet, Murama. The part of Mako was played by Eric Burtis. Music for the Campbell Playhouse is arranged, conducted, and in part composed by Bernard Herman.